So if everybody would stand and face the rear of the car. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And what I'd like to do, something just a little bit different uh, this evening. I know that everybody, uh, I know that everybody uh, heard about the very sad news about Autumn uh, Pasquale in uh, Clayton, New Jersey, a uh, young 12-year-old girl who was uh, found uh, murdered. And uh, I, I, I just would like, and this was a, by the way, this was a suggestion that was made to me by one of our members, uh, you know him as DJ uh, Dreamy, uh, Joe Allison Dreamy. He asked me to remember her, and I would have done that anyway, but I just mentioned that he brought it up. Uh, just a moment of silence, not only for Autumn, but for all the innocent children throughout the world that um, are vulnerable and don't have somebody to protect them. Um, I ask you just to reflect on it in your own way for just a moment. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we won't be talking about that tonight. I, it's, to me, it's really too upset. Uh, of course, so this evening, I'd like to welcome uh, Assemblyman Nelson Albano. He will be our speaker for the evening. I want to thank uh, Bart Barton and the people from South Jersey Shooting Center and uh, Mr. Atticat for allowing us to have our meetings here. Uh, tremendous people, wonderful to us, wonderful to the society. We wouldn't be able to accomplish some of the things that we are, are able to accomplish without uh, the help of, and generosity of so many people. So I thank you and please pass my regards on to everybody. Uh, <clears throat> one of the most important things uh, that we do need to, to talk about, and I, and I know that everybody knows that, and I can see it, I can see it happening already in the crowd, is that we need to increase our membership. And you'll uh, hear me say, and I'll say this directly to Assemblyman Albano, we need to have an influence on the New Jersey State Legislature. Because we have to uh, uh, find a way to open up the lines of communication so that uh, when bills become uh, introduced or even considered to be introduced, that there is at least an opportunity for the firearms community, if it's a firearms related bill, something in the law and public safety department, as we just found out. Which, which uh, committee did the laser bill come out? Was that one? Oh, yes. It was yes. also? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought that came out of a different point. Anyway, um, Anything that's going to affect the firearms owning community, we want to be able to have some input because a lot of times what we find out is after the fact, people will say to us, well, I voted for that, but I didn't know it was a problem. And so obviously, we're not making that point. So what I'm going to do, and I've already sent an email to uh, Senator Van Drew, and I'm going to copy you on that as well. We would like to set up a uh, caucus uh, for Second Amendment issues where we would bring in some of the best leaders of the 2A RKBA community, uh, people that, names that you already know, bring them in to represent the firearms owning community, and we would like uh, you also your, uh, to recommend some of your colleagues to us to be on this caucus so that we can discuss these things ahead of time and hopefully head off any miscommunications or misunderstandings with regard to the effect that some of these things have on us. For instance, the one gun alone. I can't tell you how many people I've spoken to who said, after the fact, if they had known, they, they might not have voted for it. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the aisle as well. We're going to have these caucuses, you know, which will be uh, uh, open up the lines of communication and give us an opportunity to, <coughs> to discuss these things. But, and I think uh, something that Albano will back me up on this, numbers are very important. Okay. We have to develop the numbers that are going to get the attention of our legislators. Because after all, I mean, they have to represent the interests of the people. Well, we're the people, but if they don't hear from us, and they don't know what our concerns are, then they can't represent us properly. So, uh, one of the things I think that we have made 
uh, uh, mistakes we've made as a, a group of people is we have gone about our business. We've done what good people everywhere do. We've developed our careers, we've raised our children, you know, we've saved for the future, we've had our nose to the grindstone, and we didn't pay a lot of attention to what was going on, like, in uh, Trenton and in the, the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate. And as a result, things have gotten to a certain point where we feel, uh, no matter what your political uh, affiliation is, we feel disenfranchised, we feel cut off from the process. And so it's almost as if things are happening to us instead of us, uh, meaning the American people, being involved in the process to the point where we have the influence that we're supposed to have on our representatives and let them know what it is that we, that we need them to do. And the firearms community is just as guilty of this, maybe more so than others. Uh, we have not voiced our opinion. We have not gotten those letters to the editors out. We have not gotten the calls, the letters, the faxes, the emails, the visits to our representatives to let them know, hey, you know, we're, we're the guy next door. We're your grandson. We're your nephew. We're your father. We're your uncle. We're your, your niece, your, your mother, your, you know, uh, your sister. These are the people who own firearms. And today it's increasing at a... At a ever increasing rate. You're seeing more and more people who are uh, becoming firearms owners for whatever reason. A lot of it is for self-defense, but a lot of it's for recreational shooting, competitive shooting, sports, and hunting, and so forth. Uh, they need to know what our needs are, what our concerns are. So how are we going to do this? Okay, we're kind of, uh, we're a lot bigger than we were when we started, okay, but we're uh, a relatively small group in the grand scheme of things, right? Like if you want to compare us to the TV, you know, or some of the other groups that have an influence on our legislation, uh, you know, we're tiny with a few thousand people. But we won't be so tiny if we have 10,000 people or 20,000 people or 100,000 people. And if we have, and you've heard me say this before, so this is nothing new, if we have a million, around a million firearms owners in Jersey. There is no reason in the world why we shouldn't have 100,000 members in the New Jersey Second Amendment Society to represent our interests and to voice their opinion when there's legislation that affects us, whether it's, and we need to stick together, that's another thing. You know, just because a bill may only affect hunters, that, that doesn't mean that the people who are in it for the self-defense or the competitive shooting aspect shouldn't get behind the, the, the uh, effort to make whatever changes are necessary. And the, the same is true in the opposite direction. When we have a, a two-way issue or a right to carry issue, we expect the hunters and the sportsmen to join us in those efforts because they really do affect all of us. I know a lot of people who say, well, you know, I, I don't ever really want to carry a gun, so why does that affect me? Well, it affects you in a lot of ways. It affects the transportation laws, the firearms transportation laws. We want to change them. Right now, they're extremely restrictive, and it puts people in the position where they can be held uh, as felons for making a simple technical error, for making a mistake. And, um, you know, you've heard me talk about it, in particular, the, the uh, bill uh, A1216 that Linda Stender introduced. Right now, it's a kind of a dead issue. We don't know if it'll ever rise, uh, it'll be resurrected. But um, part of the reason why it's, I think it's, gone quiet is because we all testified. Everybody, you know, all the interested parties from the 2A uh, community got in front of the Law and Public Safety Committee and testified and said, hey, look, first of all, we don't need this. It's already a second degree felony to be in possession of a firearm, on, whether you're on school property or not. And, uh, you know, that, that this bill could put people you know, into jeopardy that uh, really only made a technical error. Well, these are the kinds of things uh, why do we even know about some of these things? Because as our membership has grown, we've been able to set up a legislative committee, we've been able to set up a political, act, a political action committee, and we've got people who are actually keep, you know, tracking these things and are researching these things and keeping an eye on the legislation that comes by. And luckily, um, just as an example, and again, this is, not a, this is not a terribly critical issue perhaps, but it's just an example of what I'm talking about. The bill that was introduced uh, to um, control the sale of lasers. 
Now, I understand the reason for it, and it makes somewhat makes sense, although I think, it, in my own personal opinion, I think it'd be better just to you know, punish the people who, who break the laws that already exist. Hey. But uh, the problem with the bill, the way that it was introduced and it was written, is that it did not exempt, at the time, it did not exempt lasers attached to firearms, which would be a serious issue for uh, a lot of firearms owners. So I have to give credit to Assemblyman Albano and to Senator Van Drew. When I picked up the phone and brought this to their attention, they took care of it. So there, there is new wording in the bill that says it exempts anything that is affixed to a firearm. So that's one less thing that we firearms owners have to worry about. But that, that thank you. Well, I, I don't bring that up for, for that reason. I bring that up to make the point that we must stay vigilant. We need to follow these things. I need people to help me with those things. And luckily, I, I'm seeing more and more people volunteer their time and, and effort and uh, resources to, to help us do these things. But more importantly than anything else, we need your neighbor. We need your shooting buddy. We need your, the guy that uh, you, know, you go to the veterans uh, club with and you have a few pops on a Friday night or whatever it is. We need all those people to find out about have brochures here that I can give you. Um, uh, they need to know who we are, and they need to uh, join us, put their voice alongside ours, so that when we have a lobby day, which is another thing I'll, I want to talk to the Assemblyman and also Senator Van Drew about, uh, uh, because I think this is something that we can... Uh, I, I'm not talking about a rally. I'm not talking about you know, screaming and, and carrying signs. I'm talking about having a lobby day where we can go, we can talk to our Assemblymen and our Senators, introduce ourselves, get to know each other, so that, again, there's the, we're starting to open up lines of communication, so you kind of know who they are, and they know who you are to a certain extent, and then you can get in touch with them, and we can, you know, we, we have, can have much more of an effect than we do now. Put a face on it. That's what I'm saying. Put a face on the two-way community. We're not the knuckle-dragging yahoos that some of the people think we are, obviously. I mean, you look around. <laughs> some of us, yes. <laughs> so, so, you know, I'm standing very tall today, you know, that's I'm wearing a brace, that's what uh, But, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have people from, you know, from, from all walks of life and, you know, well, every gender and everything else. So, uh, we need them to see that, and I think that we will be treated differently. You know, we're mainstream. Let's face it, we are America. We're, you know, we're mainstream people. All hardworking, you know, all, you know, trying to uh, raise our children and our grandchildren and, and do the best that we can for the future of the, the nation. So, you know, why should we be treated with kind of uh, contempt that we see in the New Jersey firearm statutes, which are all bass ones? You know, it's the whole thing is, you know, you're a criminal if you possess a firearm in New Jersey, especially a handgun. You're a criminal unless you can prove otherwise. Well, that's ridiculous. But that is, in, in effect, how the laws are interpreted in, in, in New Jersey. So if you transport your firearm from one place to the other, well, you better be able to prove that you're going to the range or coming back from the range, right? Or, these are all things that you know. Um, the current delays that you're seeing. More and more people, I get calls and emails and letters every day telling me, Frank, why is it that I have to wait six months, you know, uh, 30 days, uh, 60 days, 90 days, you know, six months for a pistol purchase permit. You know, they already, I've already had a firearms purchaser identification card. They know who I am. They fingerprinted me. I'm in the database. All they have to do is pick up the phone and, get the, you know, and do a niche check and say, has this guy committed any crimes since, you know, he got his uh, permit? But instead, we have in place this laborious, antiquated system that drags on and on and on. The police don't want it. We, you know, I, I was talking to some uh, pe uh, people who came back from the uh, State Association of Police Chiefs meeting and said <coughs> their biggest, one of their biggest complaints is all this paperwork that they have to fill out. So let's take that burden off of their hands. They don't need it. They don't want it. We don't want it. And there's, and there's no, ne no necessity for it. So those are things that we'll want to talk to. You about it, you know, off, offline at another time, but just 
I bring that up because you're here. <laughs> okay, so I get out why you can't. <laughs> he thought I invited him to speak, but I actually invited him to listen. No. Uh, no we're very interested. We are very interested in hearing from you because, because we feel that we have a friend, and that's why you're here. We feel, we feel that you are a friend and that we can uh, become better friends when you know who we are, what we're all about, and, uh, and you can put a face on some of the people. So without further ado, I'll come back at the end for those people that want to talk about some of the other things that are still uh, kind of out there. There's a, there's a number of different uh, items, such as what we're doing about regionalization. I know I'm behind on that. I, all I can do is apologize. There's just so much going on. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the uh, Second Amendment Foundation Gun Rights Policy Conference that I attended in Orlando. That was very interesting, but it was pretty one-sided, and I'll explain that later. We, a couple of initiatives that, that I'm going to start uh, is what I just mentioned. I s just uh, sent out some emails today to the New Jersey uh, Police Chiefs Association so that we can start a dialogue with them to see if, if we can't get together. I think we both have, have the same issue, and I think if we can agree on a solution and go to the legislature together with that and say, police agree, we agree, this has to change we might get better results. Uh, and uh, what was the other? Oh, and, and the, uh, and the uh, quotes. OK, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Assemblyman Nelson Albano. He has been in the General Assembly since 2006. He presently is the Deputy Conference Leader, which he can explain because I have no idea what that means, but I'm sure it means something. And uh, he's also the Chairman of the Agriculture and National Resource uh, Committee, as well as a member of both the Labor and the Law and Public Safety Committee. So I took this right off of the New Jersey legislature website. So without further ado.